Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I would like to welcome you to the last lecture on this series on research methods. Today we will be reviewing what we have been discussing during the last seven weeks. We started our discussion with the definition of research. We talked about scientific research process. We talked about history of research, different types of research. We talked about experimental and non-experimental type of research. And we said that there are two types of experimental research, true experimental and quasi-experimental. Then we talked about three non-experimental types of research, descriptive, historical, and correlational. We have also talked about a variety of research methods in this course. We have also talked about basics of statistical foundation for quantitative research method. We also saw a demonstration of interview type qualitative research method. Criteria for judging a research study. If someone sends you their research study for a review, how would you review their research? There's a criteria. You follow that criteria before you give any comments. That criteria includes, is the review of previous research complete and recent? And this aspect of being recent is very important. If someone is sending you an article for review today, where they have referenced an article, the latest article they have referenced is five years old, you will not get any idea whether someone else has done research on the same topic during the last five years. So you have to make sure that you find something new, some latest research. Similarly, you need to see whether the problem and the purpose of the study has been clearly stated. Similarly, are the research hypothesis clearly stated? Now, an important aspect to note is that there would be some research studies that will not have any hypothesis in them. But if they do, you need to make sure that the research hypothesis has been stated clearly. The next criteria is that, is it clear how the study was conducted? The research method. If the research study was quantitative in nature, was the sample representative of the population? We'll be talking about these concepts, the sample, the population, in our next lecture. Are the results and discussion relevant to the statement of problems and purpose? This is an important thing. Because sometimes researchers start their research with some idea, but by the time they reach uh, the conclusion part, their conclusion does not match with the objectives and the purpose of the study. So a good research study should match those two ends. Are references complete and current? Sometimes important things that researchers do not provide complete references. We have already talked about they being current or recent. Sometimes uh, references are not complete. Similarly, do you have any criticism of either the content or the style of the paper or the, of the publication or the research study? So if you have any criticism, you point that out before you send your review back. How do we write our literature review? For writing our literature review, we have to first read others' literature and their reviews. And the purpose is that we take advantage of what others have already done. Then we create a unifying theme, tell a coherent story, a research publication or research study is a story. And that story should be consistent, coherent. It should have a start, a beginning, and an end. 
you should organize your background material know what material is where develop an outline first relate different areas that you are working with to each other and the purpose is to tell a coherent story how do you do all this you practice 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 let us assume you have got a research idea now where do you go from there how do you develop a hypothesis before you develop a hypothesis you need to formulate a research question that research question should be clearly stated and it should have expression of interest and intent and it should also imply a relationship between variables a good hypothesis is stated in a declarative form it posts a relationship between variables it reflects theory or literature it has to be brief and to the point and it should be testable testable means the answer should be yes or no whether you reject your hypothesis at the end of your study once you have collected all the data or you have conducted an experiment or you can reject it so rejection or acceptance of a hypothesis is an important aspect so a research hypothesis should be posed in a declarative form and in a manner where you can say yes or no at the end of your study we discussed different publishing outlets then we discussed the importance of literature review and we discussed what are those three important types of resources that you will use to build a case for your study after you have built your case for the study you will ask research question and after you have asked that research question you will uh, develop a hypothesis and hypothesis is an educated guess it's a tentative answer to your research question after that we will be discussing uh, in, the, in the preceding lectures what research method to use to find out whether you reject your, your hypothesis or accept your hypothesis. We have discussed that uh, when we are doing experimental studies, we have to choose between uh, reliability of the data or control of the experiment, control of the environment. So when we do field experiment, we do not have a lot of control over the environment, but we get actual data. In, in the case of lab environment, since we simulate, we make students act such as professionals, we might not get highly reliable data, but we do have high control over the environment. We can change different variables and see students' reaction. Now we move on to the next important aspect. How do we cite how do we document that we are citing something from someone else this is called in-text documentation when you are using someone else's work in the middle of your own paragraph so how do we do that the purpose is to give immediate source information without interrupting the flow of paper or the project or the research study in-text documentation is taken very seriously. Inaccurate documentation is as serious as having no documentation at all. We need to be brief, uh, pr provide brief information in in-text documentation and it should match source information in the works cited or the references section at the end of your research paper. You must use an original idea from one of your sources whether you quote or paraphrase it 
you summarize original ideas from one of your sources, you use factual information that is not common knowledge, you quote directly from a source, you use a date or fact that might be disputed. That's when you document. And how do we cite? There are different styles, just like there were different mechanisms to rank journals and conferences. Similarly, there are different mechanisms to cite your, your in-text documentation. Some of those styles are APA styles, American Psychological Association, they have their own style. Similarly, MLA or the Howard style. And it does not matter which style you use when you are writing your research, just be consistent. How do you find out information about these styles? You go online and, and type Howard style or an APA style and it will lead you to different sources that will explain uh, how to use that particular style, how to use, uh, how to write author's name and year of publication or if there are multiple authors how to write their names, how to use last name and first initial or the first name or the year of publication or the issue and the volume of the journal or the, or the year of conference or the place of conference or if it's a book, uh, what is the, who is the publisher of that book. So that style will include all those things. Usually we cite author's last name and year of publication in in-text documentation. In the absence of an author, cite the title and the year of publication. If you're using more than one book or paper by the same author, list the last name, year, title, um, in, in a sequence. If you identify the author and the title in the text, just list the year of publication. So basically this was a, one of those styles that you may use for your in-text documentation and the references section. But this is very brief, this is very brief, this is um, by no means a complete reference, a complete style reference in the slide. I encourage you to go online and put uh, whichever style you want to use. Okay, you should remember that every journal and every conference has a different style for this type of documentation. So whenever you are submitting your paper to a journal or a conference, you should make sure to follow their style. Some would say that we will follow Howard style. So all the specifications of Howard style will go into that and that journal or the conference does not provide any further information on that. So you need to go back to the source of Howard style and find out how to cite. But sometimes, uh, rather most of the time, conferences and uh, journals will provide you with a sample paper and you'll use that sample paper to build your own case. So if you are interested in further guidelines on these research methods or research methods in general, I would suggest the following resources. First of these resources is by Dr. Alan Lee. In his article, Integrating Positivist and Interpretive Approaches to Organizational Research, he describes what positivist approach is and what interpretive uh, approach is. Positivist approach is mainly uh, dealing with quantitative type of data analysis and, and uh, research methods. On the other hand, uh, interpretive type of research method or interpretive approach deals with qualitative type of data. Next article is uh, by Dr. Alter. Selecting Research Topics, Personal Experiences, and Speculations for Future. This article is again a commentary type article uh, where um, Alter has described his own experiences and the experiences of his students. 
So this is, uh, this is an extremely important resource if you're interested in knowing about how to select different research topics. Another article is Design Science Research and Information Systems. This article is uh, considered a seminal article in the field of design science. It describes how design science research is conducted, how it should be conducted, and what is the history and what are the future speculations about uh, this type of research method. This article, Revisiting Decision Support System Implementation Research, a meta-analysis of literature and suggestions for researchers, is a very good example of a meta-analysis type of research method. It describes why meta-analysis are important and how meta-analysis can be conducted. And on the top of everything, the paper itself gives a practical example of how that meta-analysis was conducted in decision support system implementation. Next article um, describes different research methodologies in MIS. This is again a meta-analysis type uh, research article. And our uh, sixth lecture was based upon this article. Next article is experimental models for validating technology. So this article talks about experimental designs. If you are interested more in quantitative methods, I would suggest the following articles. This article, a tutorial on research, uh, on survey research from constructs to theory is a very important article in, in information systems research. Research design, qual qualitative, quantitative, and mixed method approaches. This is a book by Cresswell. Um, and uh, chapter nine is particularly important if you are interested in knowing more about quantitative research methods. If you are interested in knowing more about qualitative research, I would once again refer you to Cresswell's book, Research Design, Quantitative, Qualitative, Quantitative, and Mixed Method Approaches, Chapter 10. For experimental designs, this article, Using Experiments to Build a Body of Knowledge, NASA 23rd Annual Software Engineering Workshop, December uh, 1998, is an extremely important resource. Similarly, Experimental Models for Validating Technology in IEEE Computer in 1998 was an important uh, article on this topic. If you are interested in improving your technical English and writing abilities, I have suggestions for the following articles. This particular article illustrates how not to write a paper, including use of or lack of methodology. This concludes our series of lectures on research methods. I hope you have enjoyed this course. I have given you a number of resources. So I hope that in future, when you need and when you want to know more about research methods, you will use those resources. Thank you very much. Allah Hafiz.